Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this week, this is kind of a special video. I was just in the middle of recording one of the um, pieces of content for my mixing membership website, MixingMadeEasy.net, and we were working on bass and electric guitars. And it was a really cool teachable moment about how to use a compressor and how to use that compressor from a tonality point of view to get it to cut through the mix. And we're talking about the compressor on this new uh, Brainworks with Plugin Alliance um, SSL 9000J channel strip which just got, came out in May of 2020 and I thought you know this uh, little five or ten minute video of, of how I did this and kind of Diving down deep into some of the detail um, gives you a real good insight to what we do over at MixingMadeEasy.net. So I wanted to share it with the YouTube community. So look in the link in the description box below. There is a link to MixingMadeEasy.net along with another link that'll give you um, a 40% discount on our annual membership for limited time only. So if you wanted to know what is MixingMadeEasy.net all about, why is it different from the other mixing membership websites that are that are out there and there's plenty of them and they're all great. Well, this little video you're about to watch is exactly why I feel it's different. You learn detail and you learn nuances and you learn some of the more uh, golden nuggets, if you will, that you just don't learn in other places. And you certainly don't get a chance to learn that on YouTube itself, unless you want to sit through millions of videos and try to find these little golden nuggets to help you make better mixes in your home studio. This is an exact, uh, comes right from the uh, May content for year 2020 for my students. I chopped out a section of it where I was talking about this compressor and how you can use it and some uh, of the, the dirty details and how to listen for compression and how to use it to your advantage. And I wanted to share it with all of my followers here on YouTube. So if you're not a member of MixingMadeEasy.net, watch the video, then click the link in the description box below. If you are a member of MixingMadeEasy.net, well, thank you very much for allowing me to share this section of your content with the rest of the community. Um, and I really appreciate your, um, you being a student and I look forward to working with you throughout the rest of 2020. So check out this video and then click the link in the description box below. See you soon. Two guitars, and we're gonna probably pan those over left and right a little. Let's start with the, uh, the, the wah thing. It already sounds plenty thin. We could still put up a a low cut around 100 just to be safe. Yeah, we'll do about a four to one ratio on this. So I wanna make sure I hear all of that, all that funky stuff. So we're gonna compress it, you know, pretty decently with a fast release. Output volume a little. So we'll take it away now. That's before. After. So you hear all compression, there's a tonality. Again, we haven't changed, we haven't touched any EQ here, right? So this, again, just like with the bass, there's a tonality here. You get, and when you compress a little heavier on this channel strip, <clears throat> now what I like about this channel strip compared to the others in the in the range, the 4000E and the uh, 4000G, the other offerings from Plugin Alliance, which we've looked at before, this doesn't have the same color. I can tell right away. Now you might not be able to, because you may not have experience with the other channel strips, but this is a more transparent console. It has, it's more clean to me. It doesn't have that gritty thing to it. And I think it said that in the manual, if I read it right, that this the, the 9000J was a more subtle uh, console, unless you start using lots of V gain, which I can hear some of the hiss in the background. If you use the total harmonic distortion, remember we read that in the manual, but right now I'm keeping it out because that's kind of more true to the console. If you want more grit, a little bit more nasty, you use the total harmonic distortion to kind of give you some of that in a very subtle way. But this is kind of a more clean sounding channel strip, which I like. It's different from the other ones, which is great. Why well, have three of the same thing? It's great to have three different flavors of ice cream, right? So this sounds good in that respect. Now, when you compress with this and we're compressing kind of heavy, you could hear the top end start to open up, 
right? You can hear it get thicker, it gets a little bit brighter than when you take it away without even touching any EQ. So remember that. Now this guitar, be careful when you're mixing this, when you sing your mix into the mixing contest. Be careful you don't boost a lot of high-end EQ, especially if you're not using analog style plugins. If you're using like stock plugins and you try to make that waka 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 cut through the mix and you start boosting the top end, it's gonna get very ear piercing. So be careful about that. But listen to the, listen to the top end frequencies, how it cuts through the mix just by compressing it a little heavier. Only doing about 6 dB. Now watch when I take it away. Hear it? It's not louder. Before? It cuts through the mix a little bit better without even having to touch the EQ. That's important. Okay. This is some of why analog style plugins are so good when you know how to use them and you know how to dial your, your ear into these things because you start to hear the tonal differences and then you can kind of shape things the way you want from mix to mix. So yes, being part of mixingmadeeasy.net is perfect for you guys in this respect. You're learning these things. Every single mix, we're getting more you're getting more into this and I'm learning, showing you different things every month, depending on how the mix turns out. But what you really ought to do, if you don't already, and it's in the store at mixingmadeeasy.net and you get 25% off. If you use these kinds of plugins and you don't have the course, Mixing with Analog Style Plugins Made Easy, go get that course. It'll cost you less than one month's membership here and you're gonna have almost 15 hours worth of training on these plugins and how to use them in the most effective way. Go into a lot more detail than what I can do here from month to month. Plus we're gonna mix a song from start to finish, you get the audio files, blah, blah, blah. But go check out that course because these kinds of things, okay, and we're talking about a little bit more advanced technique now. So for the beginners that may not quite understand what I'm saying, it's okay. Stick around six more months here, you'll get it, believe me. But for my people that have been around a while, you know, the David S. J.'s and the Randalls and the Bobby Boots <clears throat> and some of the other Jimmy's farmer. Okay. You guys have been around a while. You guys are getting a little bit more advanced, the uh, Wayne's of the world. And again, I'm not trying to forget anybody. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, the guys that send their mixes in every single month at the mixing contest, you're getting a little bit more advanced now than where you were a year and a half ago when you first started with me, which is fantastic. These are the kinds of things now I want to start to focus on as they come up during the course of the year. It's these little itty bitty nuances that we're talking about here that make the difference between a mix that sounds like a demo and a mix that sounds like a record, a professional record, okay? That takes your home studio stuff and makes it sound like, wow, who the hell did that? It sounds great. You did that, right? It's these little things. Being able to hear that compressor and know, okay, in my memory banks, this channel strip is a cleaner channel strip compared to the others. I got that reserved for the next time I want to mix with something a little bit more transparent too. I could tell on this particular compressor, when I compress a little bit heavier, it gives me a little bit more open end clarity where I don't need to use a lot of EQ. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. I could hear that. And then in the last video, when we talked about what was it, one of the tracks where I heard it in the context of the mix and the drum video. And then we went back and I said, listen, I think it was the uh, overheads. I forget. But when you watch those videos, you'll, you'll know what I mean. It's learning how to tune your ear into these things that is going to make all the difference in the world to what you're doing. <clears throat> okay. So enough about that. But when these things come up, this is why you're paying for your membership every month, because you guys are getting the things that you're not going to find on YouTube from all the other people that are out there showing you how to mix and master. And half of them don't even really know what they're talking about. But this is the kind of stuff that you don't hear from other people. You just hear basics. You don't hear this detail. This is what you have to learn how to do if you want to turn out great sounding mixes. You have to understand how to hear compression. You have to understand the nuances between these different types of plugins, whether you're using these kinds of channel strips by Plugin Alliance or whether you're using Universal Audio or whether you're using Waves or Slate Digital or any of the other ones. Any of these kinds of plugins, these analog style plugins that emulate this old piece of gear, you have to understand how they work. They have nuances to them that you can use to your advantage. This is what the pros do. Okay. So again, if you don't have mixing with analog style plugins made easy, 
go pick it up in the mixingmadeeasy.net store, okay? You know where it is. You get 25% off just because you're a member here. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up with an email and I'll take care of you. So once again, let's just listen to this quickly and we're gonna jump over to the other guitar. So again, we're compressing about 6 dB with a quick release, a four to one ratio, and of a slow attack. Now, if I use a faster attack, slow attack. Okay, can you hear the difference there? When I go to a fast attack and a slow attack just by clicking this LED and the release button pulls out, that's what happens on this. And remember, even at its slowest attack, it's still pretty fast, but it's based on the program material. Listen to the transient of the chukka 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 waka 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 right? With a fast attack, it softens that waka waka waka. Where the slower attack, where I originally had it, it cuts through a little bit more. That's the, this is kind of a funky guitar. We want to hear that funk. I don't want to soften that. I want to hear it. Again, tuning your ear into a compressor and know what to listen for. We want to leave that in. Again, listen for that now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo up the track so you can hear it. Okay, I always do this in the context of the mix, as you all know, but for this example, again, and I'm sorry if I'm if I'm going on a rab going down a rabbit trail here, but again, this is this is this is why you're here, okay? This is why you're here, is to learn this stuff. Not just how to twist the knobs and you gotta learn this stuff, okay? So here we go. So here's that guitar. <laughs> Okay, this is with the slower attack setting. Now if I go to a faster attack. Slower attack. Listen, no, listen to the one, two, three, four. That no, now I'm gonna go to a slow, a faster attack. Hear how it's a little softer? You still hear it, but it doesn't have that pop. Now listen. It almost sounds like it's a little more staccato-y because you can hear the transient a little bit more on the front end. In solo, you go, okay, what the hell's the big deal? In the mix, it helps it cut through, and this is why we do it in the context of the mix. Here we go. I'm gonna go to the faster attack now. Three, four. Slow attack. Right? Fast attack. It almost pushes it back in the mix. Slow attack. Pulls it forward. Right, so faster attack's gonna push the, it's gonna give the illusion that it's sitting a little deeper in the mix. Slow attack, it's gonna pull it a little forward to the front. I want this forward to the front. Now you may not want it forward to the front. You may want it to the back and that's okay. But understand what it does. And we talk a lot about that in Mixing Made Easy Volume 2 Advanced. If you don't have that course, go get it. We talk a lot about what I call the 3D sound field where you pull things in back and forth to the mi in the mix using attack and release time. Mixing Made Easy Volume 2, go check that out as well, <laughs> okay? Trying to help you guys as much as I can here. Okay, so we're gonna leave it on the slow attack. Okay, now we're gonna look at the other guitar. 